I have my video card installed and I have it up and running. And just real quick, as far as updates I've had to make to it, really the only issue I found so far is I had one of the ICs labeled incorrectly on the silk screen. I had it labeled as a 7420 when it should have been a 7414. And I had put in a 7420 and that obviously uh, had caused issues. And as I was looking at the, the actual schematic, I noticed it was the wrong IC in there. So I put in the proper IC according to the schematic, updated the silk screen to reflect that it's a 7414 and not a 7420. Uh, other than that, I have not made any changes to the video card. And I've created a small loop of code that just simply runs, really it's the exact same code as my post test where I test out my RAM. And I go from the top of the RAM to the bottom of the RAM. I write values to it, read it back, and test it. Well, for the video card, I'm just start, starting at the top of the video card memory and working my way down and writing values to it. I'm not reading them back or comparing. I'm just simply writing color values. And I, just for... Uh, well, maybe for laziness at this point, I just copied the procedure that I wrote multiple times and I made one that sets everything black and then red, green, blue, and white just so I could see if it uh, really gives me the output that I'm looking for. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my system. I have the video output here going just to a little HDMI. So I'm going from a VGA to an HDMI converter into a USB capture. Um, so just, a, uh, I guess, a lot of extra components there. But I wanted to just capture it on the computer so that you can kind of see what I'm picking up. And uh, it's, it's quite representative of what I see on the LCD itself. Uh, and maybe one other quick note. I stepped my processor clock down to 8 megahertz. I can test the 9 again, but when I was playing with the 9, I wasn't quite getting everything to work consistently. So I dropped down to a 32 megahertz here, which means 16 into the system, 8 at the processor, and that seems to be working well. Now I should also note I have not filled in any of the pull-up resistors either on the external bus on the card or the internal bus on this card. So that is something I can do and likely will let me get back to the 9 megahertz, uh, but I'll, I'll come back to that later. I'm not worried about that, that 9 megahertz at the moment. So go ahead and uh, turning this on. I have the video. You can see it initially comes up here uninitialized, but then I cycle through my colors from highest address to lowest address. In other words, bottom of the screen to the top of the screen. And as I move forward, of course, I'll change that. And now I did notice here my real-time clock didn't quite come back correctly, so it might still have some issues even at uh, this oscillator speed. So I'm going to try it again, and that did fail there. Maybe I will try a slightly slower. I don't know what I've got here handy. Oh, here's a 28. So I suppose that would take me down to a 7 megahertz CPU clock. I just want to see if my real-time clock comes up correctly at that speed. And nope, that still does not. So there's something else going on there uh, that I'll have to look into troubleshooting. Uh, I have, oh, I can go down to a 19. And that looks like that's working fine at 19. So somewhere between the 19 as my starting and 28. I am losing the communication, proper communication to the real-time clock. Uh, and that very well could be just a timing thing. Again, if I put the, uh, if I come back to the pull-up resistors, I have to think about what would this card be impacting as far as the R RTC is concerned, because it's coming from the VIA. The VIA is pulling external address and data. And I know timing with it has been a little uh, fussy. So initially on my breadboard, I had to use the Let's see, it was an inverted P clock, a peripheral clock coming out of my clock gen. But then once I got out of the PCB, I had to go back to the original P clock instead of the inverted P clock. So there's just a little bit of timing with that. And I'm guessing if I pull these up on this card, I'll probably get that back up to the speed I want to get to. But 
that's that's troubleshooting for a later date. I'm not worried about that at the moment. So I'm going to, for now, just for the video's sake, uh, if I go, for the video card's sake, if I go up to, back up to, this is my 36. So this is where I'd maybe like to get back to because I was running at that without the video card. Um, I can see it does not, it, it stops basically. It doesn't make it through uh, everything I'd expect it to get through. Oh, and one thing I noticed, I don't have my nano powered. That probably isn't helping. Um, so let me just try it with the nano. And yeah, I don't see it continuing on at that speed. So the uh, the 36, definitely the extra load on that bus is causing an issue, uh, which is fine. But I would really like to be able to get to this 32 running. So that's what I'm going to have to work on. Uh, so I got the 32 back in. All this is going through post. Everything passes. And then on the screen, you can see it, it ran through those colors just fine. I do notice on the video output there's just some slight vertical banding. Uh, I think I can do some tweaking here, maybe try a different uh, couple of ICs on here and see if I can clean that up a little bit. It's barely noticeable, but uh, or at least to me, it's, I'm not too concerned about it. And I can tell there's a little bit of noise, and I don't know how well OBS picks it up, but if I kind of move my hands around, um, I can maybe see some slight different waves uh, going through the video signal just some noise that's being introduced this is just a two-layer card there's not an inner ground plane or anything like that and and I probably could do better on the design to really keep the high-speed stuff away from the analog out um, so that's maybe a future revision some cleanup I can try to do not stuff I'm worried about at this point though uh, so I think I am quite happy with this a video card is working without modification so I can burn through all that and it looks like it's doing what I would expect it to be doing. It's going from the bottom of the screen to the top. I'm filling out all the pixels. Um, so now I have just some optimization maybe to try doing with the buses. Try to get back up to, well now actually it looks like my SPI is working at that speed for the real time clock. So it must just be on the edge of something timing wise. So I think I can get that cleaned up and run a consistent uh, 8 megahertz here like I've got in. So 8 megahertz processor clock. And that is looking good. I have a lot of assembly work to do at this point because I need to put in functionality for A, a font. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build that up from scratch. Really just using the patterns of what I've done for my, my previous 6502 and 65816 video cards. Uh, so I've got to get a font. I've got to get some basic... Uh, just procedures for drawing shapes, things like that. And I'll try to get a test pattern uh, screen working with maybe an animated, probably go back to the one I've used on previous videos on previous projects where I have a, a, a standard test screen I was using along with an animated sprite. I'll see if I can't get that running on here uh, before, oh, maybe turn of the year. We'll see how things go. Uh, so that's a quick update. Uh, thanks for watching.